Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out the solo from Take It Easy by The Eagles. This is a fantastic solo to learn for loads of different reasons. Aside from the fact that it's just a beautiful piece of music, it's like a lesson on how to play a solo using chord tones. It's beautifully constructed. What I'm going to take you through is not just how to play it, but why the licks work, how they work, and how you're going to be able to use them in your own improvisations. It's such a cracker. First of all, though, I'm going to start with a very slow playthrough. Three, four. I suspect there's going to be a few people that watch me play that and go, no, you've got the fingering wrong. Everybody else teaches it a different way. And that might be true. And I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to give you a couple of options here. But I suspect that this song was actually played on a B bender guitar. It's normally a Telecaster guitar with a special lever that connects to the uh, strap pin, which when you pull the guitar down, it pulls the little lever and bends the B string up a tone. There's a couple of points in the song where I'm listening to it. I'm like... You can kind of do it and it sounds pretty close, but it doesn't quite like absolutely nail it. So that's kind of informed some of my fingering choices here. But like I said, I'm going to go through now when I go into each lick in a little bit more detail and show you some alternate ways to play it that you might find a little bit more familiar. <laughs> Beautiful. It's all based around a G chord here. The first, second finger sliding from second fret to fourth fret on the third string. And now we're playing the thinnest two strings, third fret with the first finger. This is outlining G bar chord. You can clearly see where all of that's coming from. Then, now this, very, very common move. It's adding the sixth. Some people would say it's kind of making it the major pentatonic scale. Which is true, but it's so infrequent. I feel like it's just more an embellishment of the G rather than thinking of it as a new scale. Then back. Now we've got very nice thirds line in the major scale here. This is the third fret and the fourth fret with the first and second fingers. Sliding it back to the first and second fret, still on strings two and three. And then open second and third strings at that point you might want to use the third finger there just to make sure the thinner string is not ringing out as well when you it's very easy to get if you don't cover that thinner string so the first two bars three four and one and two and three four and one two three and four it's all off of a g be able to improvise with that line anytime you've got a G chord. It's a really, really nice. Explore it. Get a, make a little loop with a looper pedal playing a G chord and explore that lick. Don't just learn the lick as it appears in the song. You're only getting half of the value if you look at it that way. So it continues. Now here, the chords are going G, D, to C. Now that's what's happening in the rhythm. Here, G, again, it's that same, it's just part of the chord. Now here we've got this. You can see it's part of the D chord. Okay, what I would suggest you do is, and now slide it, keeping that first finger down. Sometimes I feel like that note is obvious. Other times I'm like, well, I'm not sure it might be a rhythm guitar. Sounds kind of nice to have it in there. And it does outline, it's kind of a D70 sound. And it's definitely a chord tone for the C chord, which we're moving to. So I think it kind of works nice to have that. So one, two, and three, and four, and 
So I'm leaving the first finger down, but I'm trying not to hit it. I'm just letting, letting myself accidentally hit it, if you know what I mean. One, two, and three, and four, and sliding down to the second fret. Open, second, open. Now we've got open D string, hammer on second finger, second fret of the fourth string, back to the open G. Now we've just got the open G, second fret, and then we're going back to G. Okay, four and one and two, three and. Okay, just sliding second fret to fourth fret again. But one and two, three and four. Okay. Now we've got. Now this is one of those ones very commonly you see this written. Which is a kind of a more common lick, and you can do that. That's a ninth fret to the eleventh fret, and then tenth fret on the second string. Nine, eleven, ten on the B string, back, and slide in there. I think it's more likely to be here. Okay, but maybe done, but with the bend played by the B bender. That's my best guess, but I'm not sure. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe somebody will let me know in the comments if there's conclusive proof. I definitely can't find any videos of like Joe Walsh playing it with a B-bender. He's always playing it pretty similar to this. Um, so that would be fifth fret to seventh fret slide, if you don't have a B-bender. And it's four and one and two, three and. Okay, five, seven, five, fifth fret on the thinner st string. Back to the seventh fret, and then reverse slide down to the fifth fret, and then the third fret. And one, and two, three, and four. Let's try to get all of the way up to there so far. Three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, and one, two, three, and four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, and one. If you want, you could do it further up the neck. Then you've got beautiful little line. Now this, the chord miraculously changes to a C chord. And we've got the same idea that we've been using all of the way through with the G to the C. Now, okay, C. Okay, so we've got a big bend there, the 10th fret, uh, a tone bend, and one, and two, three, four, and one, two, and two. This is a reverse bend to the 8th fret, 10th fret, 12th fret, and then we're going to play the two 12th fret thinnest two strings together on beat one, where it changes to an E minor chord, funnily enough, it's that E minor chord, it's that line in the harmony again. So that part from the C, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and three, and four, and make sure you get that three, three, it's there, it's coming three, and four, and. Now, next section, it's changed to an E minor. Now, I'm hearing a few twiddles in there, but the basic one will be one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Okay, there's a little, another nice little bend here. So, I'm often putting in some little extra strums there, but whatever. 12th fret, 10 to 12, hammer on, but two strings at a time. And then I think it's a slide. I think it's a slide. I'm not certain. I think it is. 10th fret to 12th fret. I don't know. That's one little bit where I was like, is it that? I'm not sure. Is it something tricky with the B bender? No, I'm not really sure. It's just, it's just a little bit tricky to absolutely definite sometimes when I'm doing these transcriptions. Again. Hey, it could be that. It could be that. I'm not sure. This is my best guess. Um, 
It's a little slide. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two. All off beat. Now, little finger's going to go down the tenth fret of the second string. I use my second finger. A lot of people prefer using their third finger there for that bend. For some reason, I just feel like I get it a bit more accurate using my first and second fingers. It helps me keep that little finger down. I think if I do this one, sometimes my little finger's not as stable for some reason. Completely up to you, your choice whether you use fingers one and two or two and three, but I would recommend using two fingers to do that bend. So this, this note's bending a tone while you hold that one. Release, and then seventh fret. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Okay, finishing on beat four. It's an important kind of rhythmic cue. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Okay, now we've got... I sometimes think it's... I'm not sure it's seven or eight, but I think maybe seven. One and two, three and four and. One and two, three and four and. It's again, it's just playing out of the sequence. I guess it's major pentatonic, right? If you were going to call it something, but I just think it's really beneficial to see these licks as phrases based around the chords themselves rather than trying to think of a whole scale because you can see it's, it's this just outlining that chord shape and I think that's a, more helpful when the chords are rushing by and you've got to try and find a line when you're improvising it just seems to make more sense to me maybe it will to you too okay now we're going to this is another one of those ones where a B bender would be so convenient here it's and this again this is outlining this like a, a, a G chord like that I can't even put my fingers in that fret together like that this one we want those two notes and we're bending we're bending this note to that okay so tenth we bend play the th the tenth fret on the thinner string and then do the bend again then it's a reverse bend from tenth fret tone to the eighth fret eight nine on the third string one and two three and four and 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 now one is a hammer on very fast hammer on from eighth fret to tenth fret one two and three and four one now i leave that finger there i'm not 100 percent sure it's left down there on the record it's again hard to tell but my gut feeling is it is that it is left there one two and three and four that's seven eight seven one two and three and four okay this is one of those situations where I prefer to use my first and second fingers, but some people will prefer using their third and fourth. Doesn't really matter. That's probably easier, first and third for the... Ah. For that little bit at the end. Reverse bend of the seventh fret. Flick off to the fifth fret, seventh fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. Again, that's a, just a real classic lick for, you know, for this. It's just those C pentatonic -y kind of riffs that work real great. This first note is anticipated. It's worth realizing as well. So one, two, and three, and four, and coming on beat four, four, three, four, and one, and two, three, three triplet, four, uh, three, and four, and, that's a triplet, 16th note triplet, really awful to try and count, three, and four, three, and four, and three, and four, and, I don't know, 
you can. Just listen to it. Now, this last part, particularly that, I just feel like a B bender is so much stronger to get. Pull the guitar net down and it bends it straight into tune. But if we don't have a B bender, uh, that's the other thing. He, does, he doesn't repeatedly bend it. It's not. I think I often play that, but it's one bend, which would be pulling the guitar down to get that tone bend. So that's, uh, this is again going to this, G outlining that G harmony. One, two, uh, it's outlining the G harmony, but it's an E minor chord. So uh, this is actually outlining an E minor seven harmony, I should uh, point out. This, this way of playing an E minor, that. It's that. G major and E minor are very, very similar chords. So quite often in these kind of country bags, you, you might outline a G major to infer the harmony of E minor because they're so closely related. Same with A minor and C, relative major and minor. If you're not sure what they are, you might want to go and have a little look on my theory course. So let me help you out there. So anyway, 10th fret, thinner string, play with a little finger. 10th fret, second string, play with the third finger, tone bend. One, two, three, four. One and one, release. Then it's first finger, eighth fret, second string, little finger stays down. Now this one's another tricky one. This is little finger going down the 14th fret of the thinner string, and the second finger or third finger if you prefer, doing a tone bend. So you're outlining this little D shape here. That's what's happening, it's that. And that's that whole solo. Now, what I would strongly suggest you do is spend a little bit of time looking at the relationship between each of the licks and the chord sh that it's being played over, and then spend some time kind of improvising with the same lick. So try deliberately, use your new lick and then go into some other improvising bit of scale, what other licks that you might know over that chord, and then deliberately use it again. Try and work it into your repertoire. When you're learning new licks, that's the way to do it. If you just practice the licks independently, they're very rare to become part of your actual repertoire when you're improvising. You need to kind of mix it with stuff that you know already so that your musical imagination gets used to going like, oh, there's this thing I can use that's like the other ones that I got. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make, and one that I made plenty of times as well, is learning solos that we really love, but without chopping them up into licks and then exploring each one individually. There's tons of great solos that I've learned over the years that the, the licks from them never come out. They're part of, they should be part of my musical vocabulary, but they don't happen. And that's because you've got to dissect it, break a solo into lots of little chunks, and then explore using each of the elements on their own until they start to feel nice and natural, and they'll start to come out when you're improvising on your own as well. Um, yeah, really hope you enjoy this one. I'll stick a little backing track up now as well if you want to practice along with my acoustic guitar, just like I did at the beginning. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. Plenty more Eagles. And of course, the whole rest of the song is over on the website. You might want to go and check that out. There'll be a tab over there, of course, as well. Have yourself a fantastic day. I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. Bye-bye.